my fourth grade friends. So today we're going to work on taking notes on things called transformations. And then you're going to need some practice. We did water whiteboard materials. If you don't have that, you can do just a piece of scratch paper to write down your ideas on. Okay, so first of all, let's start with the, our notes. I'm turn my camera around. Perfect. All right, so we're going to get started with our date and our title. We're talking about transformations in geometry. Remember, you can always pause the video if you need more time to take your notes. All right, so we talked about a transformation means how things change. Like in our head, we talked about butterflies. We thought that a lot of us think about butterflies when they change, right? They change. But in geometry with shapes, it's only talking about changing its location, a polygon's location. These polygons are still congruent, meaning they are still the same exact shape and size. They don't change at all. If it starts a big square, it's going to end a big square. It might just be in a different spot. It changes its location. We're going to learn about three types of transformations. Remember, you can always pause if you need more time. The first one we talk about is called a translation. We call this a translation, meaning it can slide in any direction. And we drew a little slide by doing kind of like a curved rectangle. And we did a skinny rectangle with perpendicular lines going across it to make like with steps on the back of the slide. We also highlighted the SL and slide to help remind us that translation, that SL, means it slides in any direction. Then we drew some examples down below. Okay, so we drew these three. We drew a triangle and we just slid it to the right. All we did was move it over. Then we talked about how we could have a heart and we could slide it down. Notice the shaded part is still in the left. All it did was change from up here to down here. It slid, it translated. Then this one, we noticed we drew a square with a dot. And this time it did a translation down at an angle. Our dot is still in that same spot because these are exactly congruent. They didn't change, they only changed locations. So first one was translations, slide around. Now the next one is a reflection. This means it flips, flip it over a line. And we highlighted the FL and flip to remind us that reflections flip. We talked about this one almost like we have a pancake and we're gonna flip it so it's the other side. We think of this line here almost as a line of symmetry. Whatever it's like on the um, one side, it has to be the exact opposite on the other. So our triangle tip is pointing to the top. So it did a reflection and now it's pointing on the bottom. Same with our heart. We did a heart and it did a reflection over our line so now the kind of the tops are opposite and the tips of it are touching almost. And if we did our box this time with the dot on the left, how oh, it's on the left and it flips over that line. So we can like scoop it up underneath. Oops, nah, got caught on there. And we flip it. So it moves from the left to the right. Then this time we did the same kind of idea where we had a circle and we colored in the left half and it flipped. So now the colored half is on the right. Still the same circle, same size, but it flips, it reflects over that line. And the last one we talked about was a rotation. This means to turn around like a clock. And we drew a little clock and we talked about how we can turn like a clock called clockwise. We also talked about how it could turn backwards counterclockwise. 
So let's look at some of those examples. The first one we did was we had a triangle. And then we pictured this little box in our head. And we noticed the tip was on the top. If we want to rotate it once, that would bring our tip to the opposite side, right? Or to the next side, meaning it would point to the right. The same kind of idea with our heart here. The open, the top part is on the top of our box. If we rotate it once, we turn it, the two parts, the circle parts of it, the curved parts would be on the right now. And for this one, our dot started on the bottom. So we imagine that box sketched in our head around it. We can move well, four times until it's back at that same spot for rotations. If we rotate it one spot clockwise, then our dot should be here on the left. And we have a skinny line with our dot and then our long line of our rectangle on the top and bottom and our other short parallel side there. Well, we talked about sometimes we can turn shapes counterclockwise. So for this one, we started with a pentagon. Now we did our arrow to the right, so this just shows that it's going through a change. But clockwise would move like a clock around. Counterclockwise means it moves backwards. So if our tip starts here, and we imagine that little box around it, right? It can move to four sides. It wants to move once counterclockwise. So we would need to end up over here on the left, which it does. This is a one counterclockwise turn. All right. So you might want to keep your notes handy. The next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to read a book first. And then we're going to do some practice problems. Okay. Our book is called Shapey. There's Shapey. It's the perfect pet. Now, Shapey's going to do some tricks. I want to see if you can find them and how they relate to our lesson today. What math words can you maybe add to our book that it's missing? All right. So this is Shapey. Shapey is the perfect pet. Shapey never needs to be walked. Shapey doesn't need to be fed. Shapey is very quiet. And Shapey can do tricks. Perhaps if you're patient, you'll get to see some. Wow! Shapey just did a slide! Wasn't that amazing? Put down the book for a moment and give Shapey a hand. Good job, Shapey. What word could we say instead of a slide? What's our one of our new vocabulary words we know? Translation. Remember that SL in translation? It means slide. Good. Don't blink! Shapey just did a turn! What do we call it when it, it can turn around? A rotation. Good. Shapey turned again. Shapey's really moving around today. Shapey must like you. Did you see that? Shapey did another slide. Shapey can do one more trick. If you want to see it, you will need to be patient. You have to wait and wait and wait. You'll have to get very good at waiting. It just did a tiny slide. But that wasn't its last trick. You will have to continue to wait. Quietly waiting and waiting some more. Keep waiting and waiting. Just waiting. What? I don't believe it. Shapey just did a flip. Is that a belly button? I think that's a belly button. Shapey is obviously exhausted now. You had better let Shapey rest. Oh, look. She'd be so tired. It fell asleep on its back. Could you please close the book now and put it in a quiet place? Shapey really needs its rest. The end. Oh, Shapey. Goodness. So Shapey kind of had three tricks. What were those tricks again? It could slide, flip, or turn around. Now, see if you can remember those math words that mean slide. Which one meant slide? 
Translation. What does flip mean? Reflection. And what does rotate or what does turn around mean? Rotation. Good. All right. So the last thing we're gonna do together is we're gonna do some practice problems. We're gonna go through twelve cards. Okay. And then we'll check our work at the end. So I want you to write down numbers one through twelve, and then write down your three vocab words. For, well, one of them, either a translation, a reflection, or a rotation. You can use your notes if you need to to help you. Okay. So here's number one. Remember, you can pause the video if you need more time. Here's number two. Think through, is it a translation, reflection, or rotation? Three. Four. And I know I'm going fast. Remember, you can pause. Five. Six. This one's tricky. Think through what we did for our shapes to see if we're not quite sure. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. And the last one. Twelve. All right, let's check and see how you did. It's number one should have been a rotation. Two was reflection. Three and four were both translations. It slid across the page. Five was a reflection or a flip. Six was a rotation. It turned almost like a cartwheel. It turned. Seven was a reflection. Eight was a translation. Nine was a reflection. Ten was a rotation. Eleven was a translation. And twelve was a reflection. All right, fourth grade friends, I hope you had a good start to our transformations uh, little lesson. Next time, we will work more with Shapey, and you're going to do an activity on Wednesday with some task cards with Shapey. All right, see you soon. Bye.